Okay, so welcome to our day two at Disneyland Paris. Uh, it's about quarter past eight in the morning. Now, I know some of you are thinking, hang on, it doesn't open till half past nine. And this is one of the perks of staying on Disney property. We actually get an hour's magic time first thing in the morning which we get to use. So we are choosing to do that today. Now, it's really important that you come into these things with a bit of a plan and a bit of a strategy. We didn't really have one for day one. We do have one for day two. We have chosen some rides that we want to try and get on this morning. Things like uh, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and um, the uh, Web Slingers in Avengers Campus. And we're gonna be seeing if we can get onto those rides really quickly before all those queues get really, really big. We're staying at Davy Crockett's Ranch, which means we get this extra time in the mornings. Even though it's not one of the big hotels like the Disneyland Paris Hotel, we can still gain access to this time. So we're coming in to see what we can do. It's an opportunity for you to get some of those really big ticket rides. So Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Avengers Flight Force, and other rides like that though. Now clock up really big lines throughout the day. Crush's Coaster, we looked at about half past six, seven o'clock yesterday. We're still carrying a 60 minute wait. So rides like that are things we really want to get on. And I'm going to be talking to you a bit today about availability of single rider lines on certain attractions and some tips and tricks of how you, uh, things you can do while you're walking around the park. So we're going to be starting in uh, Disneyland Studios this morning and uh, hopefully we're going to have some fun. And in order to get there, you must employ Captain Jack Speed. So thoughts for you as we're approaching security now. Whatever you have in your pockets, just make sure you get it out on the side ready to go. So I've got things like my car keys and I've got obviously uh, this phone that I'm doing the recordings on and I've got my own phone in my pocket. So you need to make sure that you put those things to the side. It speeds your way through security much more easily if you're showing them things that might show up on that magnetic pass through. So you can see that even though we've got here nice and early, we were here about quarter past eight, we weren't allowed to drive into the park until eight o'clock is when they opened the barriers and we were six cars behind. There are still already big queues to get in. It shows you just how many people stay on a Disney property and are already able to get access to the park. So make sure if you do do that, that you get in line really early in the morning. Those of you a bit like a bit of morning Disney, the Lion King fit for the day. We've got the Mickey ears and the Lion King hoodie on. We forgot our ears yesterday. They weren't very happy. So we forgot our ears, we want to go back. We didn't, so they've got their ears with them. We've got a Caitlin Disney fit as well. So she's got some uh, purple sparkly Disney ears going on here, uh, along with her Marvel hoodie, her Pride Marvel hoodie that we actually got when we were in Florida in 2022. And I think we've got, uh, we've got her group bag. We are going into uh, Disney Studios, so we do need the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, represented in there as well. Of course, it's going to be group because it has to be and of course we've got that little mickey we've got marvel represented over here as well by the happiest teenager on the planet and we've got some disney uh, with my wife here as well and you've probably already seen i have got my uh, marvel on as well along with a garden to the galaxy t-shirt on because you know why not I can freeze this moment, but I can still go out. There we go. So we've got into Disney Studios. You can see Studio One in front of us. And this is really important. Really, really soon, they're gonna be closing all of Studio One to make refurbishments. Now, right now, it is the main cut through, the main way into the main part of the park. So we're gonna be heading there. We are heading to Ratatouille, the adventure. First, see if we can beat that big queue. And then we're gonna head over to Avengers Campus for the Spider-Man Web Slingers adventure. Take a look at this place. Yes, I do. If I... Ooh, Brown Derby. Okay, we're activating what we have has become known as Fry Speed. All ears watchers will know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, massive Fantasia Disney hat with the Peter Pan uh, flying statues at the top. So even with magic opening time, look at the queue for Crush's Coaster, already coming away from the building, already down here. And that's one of the reasons we're not doing this one first. We we'll come, oh, might come back to, to this 
later. It is worth noting that even if you're here for magic time, not everything is open uh, when you first get here at 8.30. A lot of the big ticket attractions are, but not everything is. Uh, Morning, Buzz. As you come past uh, the Toy Story Playland, we're coming down into this area here and you can see uh, the sign for Chef Gusto just in the background there indicating our uh, Ratatouille Remy's adventure or Re uh, Ratatouille the adventure I should say it's saying a five minute wait right now let's face it it's going to be a walk off so Ratatouille the Adventure is a Disney dark ride and it's got 3D 4D elements as well we'll be picking up some 3D glasses as we walk through and as you walk through this area you can see lots of amazing theming as you come through here obviously all themed to Ratatouille uh, we've got our 3D glasses here, so everyone has to grab ourselves a pair because it is a 3D adventure. You are shrunk down to the size of a tiny rat as you enter the ride, and hopefully this is going to be a lot of fun. These beautiful little rats here. I love, I love my family. Yeah, they were. So the five minute wait turned into a stroll onto the rats. Um, we've got our 3D glasses. So we're ready to go. Des invités pour le dîner. Yes, what a good dinner. Huh? Pour le repas idéal. Coco vin? No. A second omelet? Two second. What? Mais oui, that's it. You are welcome. <laughs> I love that ride so much, it's so much fun. But we got blown out, we got a little bit wet, and it's so good, it's still gonna be a walk, so we're just gonna go do it again. That is fantastic, it's so much fun, it's so so clever. So there are parts in there where you can't tell where your ride vehicle stops and the video starts. It's just so much fun. And what's quite unique about that is it's actually a trackless ride. So your ride vehicle, while it is programmed, actually moves really freely around there. So you can spin, you can change directions. You never know what direction you are going in next. It's brilliant fun. Right, off to Avengers Campus. This is really cute. Little wine bottles and little rats. This fountain is right outside. There's Ratatouille, Adventure, Chef uh, Remy's Bistro. So on the way to Avengers Campus, we have taken a bit of a detour as we walk past. We are going on uh, a little cars ride. It's very similar to what I feel like is Aliens Willing Saucers in Florida. And it's just a nice little quaint family friendly ride uh, where you get to sit and have a little uh, four wheeled rally in a little car themed, of course to the great movie cars. You've got some great theming here. Hello, Mater, how are you doing? And of course, you've got Lightning McQueen. <laughs> that was really good fun. Family friendly some fast spins in there so if you get if you do feel a little bit travel sick maybe don't do that one it's great fun a uh, nice nice kill a few minutes right let's actually get ourselves over to Avengers Camp so like with a lot of Disneyland Paris at the moment there is a lot of construction wall they are doing a lot of work here at the moment like I said in the first video day one there is lots of uh, expansion and refurb happening at the moment just to add some extra things in here so here we are walking into Avengers Campus and a very obvious music and theme change as we walk in. We are heading 
to the uh, Spider-Man Web Slingers attraction. There are lots of great things to do here. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna be uh, jumping into the line for Flight Force uh, later on, but we have some good places to eat here as well. We've got Pim's Kitchen over there in the distance, which is uh, great, there's some really modern food. In the background, you should just be able to see the Quinjet that is hiding in the back. That is a place where you get lots of characters appearing. And in fact, right now, up on the top, as we walk into Avengers Campus, you can see just about, you can see Black Panther popping his head up along the top there, uh, shouting Wakanda forever. So not only is the Black Panther, it's actually sh the Shuri version of Black Panther from Wakanda forever as well. So really, really up-to-date character attraction. So Web Slingers is, is a very clever attraction. It uses the motion of your hands and some technology to uh, track where you're shooting to shoot some spiders in there. Uh, we'll try and get some footage in there as well. Um, you will meet uh, the Tom Holland Peter Parker in there who will be talking you through your mission. And uh, you get scored on how well you do in there. A little bit like uh, the Buzz Lightyear laser attraction over in uh, the Disneyland Park. Uh, but this one has far, far better technology in there to make it a bit more interesting. Let's go and have some fun. Emily's a little bit excited because, you know, Tom Holland. <laughs> so all I'm going to say is Emily and Tom Holland. Caitlin might be a little bit excited as well. Ici chez Web, on a accès à une super technologie comme le vibranium du Wakanda ou ce fluide extraterrestre dément. On a des particules de pif et Spartec. Ça nous permet de développer des trucs incroyables comme euh, ces petits speederboats par exemple. Regardez, c'est super, ils peuvent même se dupliquer tout seuls. Se dupliquer tout seuls euh, Parce qu'ils sont incroyables. Euh, Petit, arrête de faire ça, c'est bon. Mais ça, c'est simple comme je crois. Vous tendez juste les bras dans la direction que vous voulez et le tour est cool. Euh, Peter, si Spiderbot continue de se répliquer et dévore tout ce qu'il trouve sur leur passage. Ils ont l'air bloqués en mode auto-réplication. Tu pourrais essayer de gérer ça. Là, Très bien. Je contacte M. Stark. N'appelle pas M. Stark Je ne pas M. Stark. J'aurais pas dû crier. Est-ce que tu pourrais appeler une autre personne Oh, ok. Je contacte Spider-Man. C'est bizarre. Uh, cool little details, the spider's actually running around through the vents above your head as you go to your eye vehicle. Very, very cool. Slinger vehicles. Web Slingers was a whole lot of fun. My arms are knackered though, so I'm gonna have a rest. Uh, this is a good tip for everyone. Don't be afraid to split up your party. So there's five of us, but I'm only, the only really roller coaster fan in the family. So there's, on some of the rides, like this one that I'm about to go on, there is a single rider line. If you just don't mind either splitting up your party and going on the same ride, or if you want to do different things. So my guys are gonna go research what we're gonna eat and to drink in a moment, because we didn't have a, prop, didn't have a proper breakfast before we left our lodge. And I am gonna jump in the single rider line for Avengers Flight Force, which it used to be, if you didn't know, it used to be Rock and Roller Coaster and have been rethemed to the Avengers. So uh, let's, uh, let's have some fun. And actually, as it happens, uh, the single rider line isn't actually open because it's so quiet. The uh, main line, the uh, uh, queuing line, is still only a five minute wait. So this should be essentially a walk on for me doing Avengers Flight Force. Let's have some fun. Quand vous aurez attiré les missiles hors de portée, Denver et moi, on les pulvérisera. Ils sont vraiment proches de la Terre, on n'a pas le droit à l'erreur. Unfortunately, 
that was an insane amount of fun. If you've never been on Rock and Roller Coaster or this one before, it's a launch coaster. So it takes you around a corner and launches you off really, really quickly uh, from the beginning. And it doesn't give you any time to consider it. The first thing that happens is an inversion. There are three inversions in total in that ride. If you love a roller coaster and you're a bit of an adrenaline junkie, that is definitely a ride for you. Right, let's go and get some food because we're all hungry. So in an attempt to get some food, we popped over to Laugh and Go, which is in the uh, Cars area. And it's one of the things you might find in Disneyland Paris is you might find that some kiosks are closed when you want them to be open because we wanted the ham and cheese toasty from there. So we're going to pop in, we're going to have a look at the Cars Road Trip ride, which is a re-theme of the uh, Disaster Canyon style ride uh, themed to Cars. We're going to have a quick go on there because the standby line is not very long. It's only a couple of minutes, so we're just going to have a sit down. So even though there's quite a lot of people in the queue here, as you can see, the ride vehicles are massive. So don't be deceived by the length of the queue. It is a very short standby line and they get lots of people into each run through. So we've only been here about 45 seconds and we're probably going to get into the next run vehicle after the one that's just departing now. So I think all in all, that's pretty good going. That was a nice bit of harmless fun, a bit of a sit down, nice little show, and sit down for a few minutes. Speaking of shows, we're thinking we might take in a show, we haven't done a proper show yet. So there's a sit down for uh, the Frozen Live Entertainment at quarter past 11, and we're just gonna see if we can get a space in there. If not, we'll see what happens next. delayed the show for a minute because we were still hungry because we hadn't eaten anything yet so we picked ourselves up a couple of corn dogs 
from just outside the uh, uh, Toy Story Playland. Uh, and I'll talk about those obviously properly in a different video. Actually, not too bad, quite enjoy it. Also grabbed ourselves a cup of coffee each because, you know, caffeine. Next stop now is, we're well, right next to it, is we are gonna go on to uh, the uh, Slinky Dog Zigzag Spin. Uh, the girls really wanna do it. It's about a 15 minute wait or so. And yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of fun. I have just had a hot corn dog, so I'm hoping that's not a bad idea. Uh, it'll be fine. Let's, uh, let's have some fun. enjoyed that and it actually wasn't too hard on the corn dog belly either which is a good thing so I left my coffee to cool so I'm gonna go and have that now we're gonna head off somewhere else <laughs> So we were just on our way somewhere else and thought, ah, we'll grab a, a corn dog for one of the kids as well. And guess what? Some really cute little details. We've got Al's Toy Barn cup there, CDA radio, and a few other little bits in here, including, look, it's gotta be a Pixar lamp on the desk. And don't forget about the by and large lunchbox on the back. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, you? Yeah, really good, thank yeah. you. Let's give you that one. Thank you. Come and give Jesse a hug. So we took some time, we met Jesse, we decided not to meet Woody because the line for him was much, much longer. And we have just seen that there is an English version of the Stitch Live show coming up soon. So they do these either in French or they do them in English. They kind of alternate between them, or they alternate, but they have different show times, have different languages. So if you make sure you've downloaded the Disneyland app onto your phone, I've talked about this in the first video, uh, you can check whether they are French or English. There's an English speaking one coming up, so we're heading over there now for that show that we said we were going to do. I can't remember how long ago that was now, <laughs> it's quite a while, but we're gonna have a sit down uh, and enjoy Stitch Live. So while we were waiting for uh, Slinky Dog Zigzag Spin, we could see Tower of Terror and the Parachute Drop at the same time. Obviously they're very, very similar rides. And Emily said to me, you know, I don't want to do Tower of Terror. I really want to do the Parachute Drop though. I don't know what it is. I'm not afraid of heights. I'm afraid of elevators. And I said, what? She went, elevators, you know. And I went, oh, you mean lifts? And I realized I say lifts, she says elevators. We're clearly just raised differently. So we've made it into the queue for Stitch Live and there are a lot of people here already. The next showing isn't for 20 minutes. Now, I would say don't do what you've just done and rock up to the floor. The recommendation is to get here about 45 minutes before. And hopefully we'll still be able to get a decent seat. Uh, I'm not allowed to film inside here, so I'll kind of let you know how that goes later. So we finished with Stitch, that was so cute. It was really good, it was really bespoke to the people in the audience. Uh, you had Stitch there actually talking to some of the kids in the front row, picking people up from the audience and taking pictures, showing them on screen. It was a little bit like a cross between the uh, Crush Talk, Turtle Talk in Florida and the, the uh, Monsters Laughing Floor. Really, really good uh, little show. Great for kids as well. I think there's quite a lot of kids that have really enjoyed it. We're just having one last wander around in Avengers Campus, seeing if we can spot some characters and then we're gonna uh, decide what happens next. Maybe uh, we're considering we might just go to Disney Village for a little while, have a wander around and then perhaps pop back to our uh, lodge for a little while, maybe to have some lunch. So yeah, I'll let you know what we do. Apparently, I'm not allowed this hat. 
I can't imagine why. So every park has its show and this is definitely it for, for Disney Studios. Look at that, the ultimate hidden Mickey experience. Yeah, so we are done in Walt Disney Studios, at least for now. We've just left two of our lot behind. We left Tracy and Caitlin behind because Goofy was out and there wasn't a very long line to meet him and Caitlin really wanted to say hello. So they've stopped to see him and then uh, Oliver, Emily and I are making our way over to the village to have a look around and I'll show you some of the shops that are available for you there as well. So just like in Disney Springs, they have got a World of Disney shop here. We're gonna go in, have a quick look around on our way to the village. <laughs> right, so we are back. We've had a bit of a relax. We had a snack and a lie down and because you know I'm cool I've done some video editing because you know nothing better to do um, and we're coming back into the parks now we're not going to Disney Studios this time we are going back into Disneyland Park to pick up a few rides have a bit more fun maybe see a show depending on how we're feeling and then later on we're gonna go for dinner uh, we haven't decided quite where we're going, we've got some ideas, but we'll decide for certain later on. And then we are definitely sticking around for the fireworks and drone show later on. So watch out for that one at the end of the video. If you've not seen that before, it's absolutely spectacular and well worth sticking around for. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get ourselves back through security. Get our ticket ready. And uh, yeah, go have some more Disney fun. It's true, Disney are anti running. You are not allowed to run in the Disney parks. But we're back in now, here for a bit of some evening fun. Uh, the parade is about to start on Main Street, and we don't think we're going to get a good spot for that because it'll already be quite busy. What it does mean when parades and things like that are run are quite often other attractions are far, far quieter. So, like I said, it's really busy on Main Street and the plaza at the moment. So, we're actually going to head off to Frontierland to try and hit some rides that might be quieter. We're starting off with uh, Phantom Manor, which is the haunted mansion for Disneyland Park in Paris. It's currently only a five minute wait. So in my brain, that means it's a walk on. So uh, we'll, see we, we'll see you when we get there. So because Main Street is really, really busy, we're cutting through the arcade down the sides, which is much, much quieter. Uh, really nicely themed and beautifully decorated. Okay, and a nice cool cut through as well. And see some wonderful, wonderful things in here. Little coin souvenir machines and what is no So as well as skipping up Main Street, we've come down a little side bit. So instead of going back to the corner of Main Street, we cut through here and you can see this takes us into Frontierland and there's all this wonderful theming here to look like mine shafts and things like that. So we're gonna find our way to uh, Phantom Map. So here is Phantom Manor, which is Disneyland's Paris's answer to the Haunted Mansion. Now this one is meant to be a little bit scarier than the uh, Florida attraction, although it's still only Disney scary. And it has a different story to the uh, American Haunted Mansion as well. And it actually ties in to rides like Big Thunder Mountain here in Frontierland. Okay, it's just gone 20 to six and uh, the standby line says it's a five minute wait. So let's see how long it actually takes us. When you are in these creaking doorless chambers, lorsque d'étranges et d'inquiets en bruit se font entendre tout autour, the candlelight flickers, the air is dim. 
c'est que le fantôme des lieux se manifeste. Welcome, curious friends. It is so nice to have guests. Nous sommes ravis de vous accueillir, humble mortel, dans ce mystérieux manoir. We may not believe it, but beauty once lived in this house. So Phantom Manor was good fun. Again, it's Disney scary, which is great. And they still have that effect. So at the end, you're sat with a ghost in the middle of your Doom buggy. So we've done a lot of our big ticket stuff for the day, the big target things we wanted to do. So we're just deciding, we've just decided to have a bit of a wander. Now we've come into Adventureland. And the reason, one of the reasons we're coming here is because Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril is currently a 10 minute wait. And this one, like Flight Force earlier today, has a single rider line. So I'm gonna see how long the wait is in that single rider line. Um, it's probably gonna be less than 10 minutes. They like to pack them in here at Disneyland Paris. Um, I haven't ridden this one. This, this was actually the first inverted roller coaster I ever went on when I was younger. This is the last, one of the last times I was here, so 25 years ago. And I'll be curious to see how I feel about it um, all this time later. So Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril is an outdoor roller coaster with a single inversion in there. Uh, themed, of course, to Indiana Jones, one of the rides that was brought over here from Lucasfilm. Uh, I'm gonna, it's got a 10 minute wait on the standby line. I'm gonna see if the single rider is open. If it is, I'm gonna jump in there. So Indiana Jones is great fun. It gets a lot of grief for being not very smooth and not very comfortable. And you know what? It's not the most comfortable roller coaster in the world. The restraints are quite hard, but if you know what you're doing and you know what's coming, you expect the fact it's gonna be a little bit jolty. It's an older roller coaster. It's been, it's about 30 years old nearly. Then there's nothing not to enjoy about that really. I had a great time. I'd do it again. I would do it again. So yeah, so next we're off to uh, the Aladdin walkthrough attraction here, and then I think we're gonna pop over to the castle. So uh, I'll see you soon. That's a medium. Put it against yourself, see what you think. So we've just come out of the bazaar by Aladdin's Magic Passage and we've all been persuaded to part with a bit of money. So my wife has bought herself a spirit jersey, which is beautiful, and I did uh, catch it on camera earlier on, uh, as well as uh, some he a headband for Caitlin. And she got me this. I'm surrounded by idiots. I hope they don't take it personally. So Aladdin's Magic Passage is a, a walkthrough attraction at uh, Disneyland Park Paris. Uh, we're just gonna go have a wander and a look around. As with so many other things, Disney, the theming in here is absolutely on point. You've got favorite things like the genie hanging out on the wall. It's just been crushed, like backwards cross eye. I don't know, but you can't. It's really cool, mini animatronics. He's going to be really strong. He's going to be really strong. Thumb, buddy. Thumb, hand twin. So, um, Aladdin's magical pa enchanted passage was really nice, really good fun. The models in there were really, really cool and really fond childhood memories. We're making our way to the castle now because it's time to go and see a dragon. Okay, so La Tanière du Dragon. Dragon's cave, this is the home to possibly, I think, the biggest audio animatronic ever built, certainly ever built by Disney and one of the most detailed. There's a lot more detail has been added recently so you be able to see its claws moving, its tail moving as well as waking.
so the dragon was great the detail on that thing is spectacular it's really kind of like dank and gloomy i think for the sake of recording something in there perhaps a little bit more light would have been nice but it was still amazing to look at uh, and i know that emily particularly jolly if you can get her i'm surprised we even got her away from that dragon Okay, so right now we're on our way out of uh, Disneyland Park because it is uh, just gone seven o'clock in the evening and it's time to get something to eat. So we're going to make our way over to uh, La Cantina, which is at Hotel Santa Fe, which is the Cars themed restaurant here in Disneyland Paris. It is walking distance from this park if you don't mind walking for about half an hour. But we want to save our legs a little bit because we want to be able to come back later on and be able to survive. So we are going to head out to the bus area and see if we can get a bus over to Hotel Santa Fe. Now, generally speaking, you do need a reservation for uh, La Cantina. However, we have looked this evening and it's not very busy right now. We could get places uh, from anywhere from, well, now up until uh, closing time, basically. And what we've decided to do is considering it is so quiet we are just going to take the bus over so we know when we're going to get there and then as we get close we are then going to uh, make a, a last minute reservation i had a look at 527 and i could have booked um, a table for seven o'clock so there's no problems we don't think with getting a table for there so we'll let you know how that goes and we'll have a look at the bus area when we get there as well so if you decide to do something similar you know what to expect so as you walk out of uh, Disneyland Paris we're currently walking as if we we're walking back towards the car park in that starting same direction but we get to this point here and we see a sign for uh, Bus Hotels Disney which is uh, obviously buses to the Disney hotels. Now we're going to Hotel Santa Fe. So we're gonna find our way into this area and we're gonna look for a board that tells us uh, which area we need to get our bus from. So let's go and have a look. So here we've got a very, very simple board that tells us where we are going based on it. So we've got uh, the Disney shuttle uh, to Newport Bay, uh, to New York, Cheyenne and Santa Fe is the bottom. So we're looking for blue, which is ease at the bottom, which looks like Donald Duck's hat, which is quite nice. So that one happens to be all the way down the far end from where we are. There we go, Never mind. And it looks like there is a bus there already. Will we get there in time to catch this one? Who knows? So typically we've just missed the last Santa Fe bus, but fortunately buses run every 12 minutes from here. Uh, so we're just gonna hang around get on that bus and then uh, hopefully make our reservation at La Cantina along the way. So we'll see you at the other side. Okay. No. Right, so we're now here at the Hotel Santa Fe. We've just booked a table, as you've just seen, for uh, 7.45. We arrived here, you might have seen the time on my screen, it was 7.37. So there's availability here. I don't know how busy it's going to be in here, but it's a buffet style restaurant, which is an all you can eat. So in keeping with the theming here at Santa Fe, La Cantina is a very Tex-Mex oriented place. So there is, there is gonna be lots and lots of meat involved. There's going to be chili, there is going to be fajitas, and we will have a look at all of those things when we get inside. Um, there's obviously going to be a separate video to do with food, so make sure you check that out. Have a kind of a review of what we're doing uh, here. Uh, but we'll have a quick look around while we're in here anyway. And uh, yeah, enjoy, and I will talk about it a little bit. So let's see what we've got here at uh, La Cantina. So we've got some nice uh, bread and cheese starters.
cute little eggs though. Cantina and I have to say I've eaten a lot of food. Um, it was 35 euros per adult, which is on the sort of highest end, you're only going to about 45 euros, but that was really, really good. I will of course be doing a separate vlog post about that and we'll be looking at the food that we ate. It will have a, a little tour of the different things there and I'll talk to you a little bit about my thoughts about some of those things. But I think there was only one thing there that I kind of didn't really enjoy and that's a personal preference for me which I'll talk about later, but it was really, really good. Uh, for 35 euros, actually, while it is on the higher side, I think it's well worthwhile. I got a lot of good food out of there. The drinks were a little bit more expensive than I'd like. It was about 17 euros for four cans of soft drinks in there, but at the same time, that's about in line with everything else. Uh, we're going to head back over to Disneyland Park now to get ourselves a space ready for the fireworks and the drum show this evening and just to digest for a little while because they might need to roll me onto the bus. It's the Disneyland Park Hotel lit up at night and its fountains lit up. Beautiful. I mean, this was nice before. It is like something else now. That's beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. There's a view if ever there was one. Right. So I know you can barely see me, but we've managed to pitch ourselves up for a great spot and a view of the castle for the fireworks. Now, if you look around me here, you might be able to see, and it's very dark, but there are already a lot, a lot, a lot of people that are sat in place. We've come most we've come all the way down main street into the main central plaza and we have got over an hour until the fireworks show starts but if we got here any later we wouldn't have got a spot so if you're looking for a good spot for fireworks that's right up there with that view you need to get here really really early 